they took me. Of course, it all might have been another reason I'm trying to think. Yes, because I, when they asked me, what do you know about education, I said nothing. So, you know, but that's another story. <laughs> uh, the, the Midrash that is, again, because the point is that God is there and, and to Shabbat Rasuli Mikdash, to what is it compared to a king who had a daughter? And it was time for the daughter to get married. And he, he felt he couldn't let go, but he knew it was time to get married. And so he found a prince, he made a shidduch, and he said to the prince, look, do me a favor. In your palace, build for me a little apartment that I can come and visit you from time to time. Vyasuli mikdash, v'shokhanti v'dacha. You make the mikdash, and I'll come and visit you from time to time. And it sort of struck me as a father of daughters, and got married, or the whole story. But what I liked about it is that the whole notion that revelation is not Aimah, not once. Our connection to God is all the time. Because God comes a visit. And we can just simply, whether we can open our hearts to God. And that's why I like to so, say, though it, you know, the braiding is again, as a Litvak, I go straight, but that's another story. It was a Lachaya. That is, for those of me, a delight for those who need translation. You share Sarah? I love the contrast of, or looking at stories as comedies or as tragedies and um, what you did with that idea. I was wondering, um, with your work in psychiatry and helping children and helping families, um, and then what you might plan to do pastorally in your career, you know, what you would do with those ideas um, in helping families deal with what they might be going through. Well, can you can you just spend, uh, make it a little bit more specific? Oh, sure. Well, just to me, it seemed like that could be a really fascinating way to 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 look at what's going on in your life, you know, or to look at things that have happened and seeing, you know, how can you frame these ideas? And does everything have to have a happy ending? Does, oh, I mean, I don't okay. want to answer it for you, but I just felt like oh, something about you, like I sort of thought there might be a real reason why you're connecting with those ideas, and I could be wrong. Oh no, absolutely. Okay. I was still thinking Midrash with Dr. <laughs> Dr. Kravitz. Okay, I, I think the idea of a story is very powerful. You know, the, and I think therapeutically, sometimes when you work with people, what you try to do is you try to help them take perspective on their lives and sort of get to know their story and to, and to construct a story, sometimes, as you say, with, with a happier <coughs> ending. I mean, sometimes uh, people who come in with a story that always, that they're a victim, you know, and, and they might be truly victims, but you have to help them move, change their story, you know, a victim who then um, prevailed, you know, or, you know, so I, I think the idea, the idea of story, uh, I, I guess when I wrote it, I wasn't really thinking therapeutically, I was thinking more, um, you know, from a literary perspective, and actually, uh, you know, I was talking over with, with with Dr. Nash, and he was very concerned about calling Rambam's Midrash a comedy. Yeah. So that's part of the reason why I put in the, the, the kind of the, the definition. But um, uh, I know some people, I mean, I thought about that myself. You know, was it being a little irreverent to be, you know, seeing the Midrash, you know, in, in sort of this, you know, literary, in a little literary type of interpretation. Uh, I, uh, I, I thought what you just said was that Sarah sort of, sort, of, sort of teased out of you was beautiful, as I thought that the end of your sermon, or the last third, whatever uh, Rabbi Noam was commenting upon, was really came from you, because you talked about family, talked about community, and of course, trying to grow and move knowing that we can't be perfect, even as the Mishkan uh, was built, in a sense, with imperfection. Uh, I mean, that was a really beautiful idea, and it did come out in the end. And of course, if you were going to uh, give a, a sermon to uh, a congregation of lay people, you would expand on all of that with real examples that are part of your life, because I know that you know a lot about communal issues uh, from our class, and I obviously from your own professional work. So there's a, a great potential in that that you, in your own very special, holibrating way, I guess, <laughs> can bring. I did want to ask you one thing, though. When you started out, and it was very, it was very, it was humorous, and, and, and it was, uh, it tickled the imagination about, 
you know, Moses is a general contractor, but how is he going to remember all these instructions? Um, you said that without any reference to the fact that we do not necessarily uh, accept literally Torah me Sinai. And so I always wonder, isn't it important to somehow kind of kind of let the people know that nonetheless the story raises the interesting issue, you know, without without losing the impact, but yet not falling into a kind of theology that probably isn't what you really accept. Well, that's that's a really interesting question. I mean, I spent, as some people know, my egg year writing my <coughs> thesis about teaching God, you know, teaching about <laughs> God to teenagers. And as I did this, I also like really explored my own personal theology. And I found as I wrote this sermon, it was like taking me on that journey a little bit further in terms of my personal theology. And I realized that for myself, um, to speak about God, um, even though I don't rationally believe in God as a um, as a individual, you know, as a, you know, that you can have a conversation with God about building the Mishkan. Um, I find to to once again, like to go back to Sarah, to move into a story of speaking with God that way is a way for me to connect with God. And um, so um, I, I guess, and I think children intuitively get this. The, the children, um, for some reason, intuitively are able to, to, to speak with God or to understand God in these many different sort of ways. Um, I guess, so I guess it would be something that I'd be happy to speak with somebody about afterwards, but also we're sort of, we're sort of in the, in the realm of, of play here in a way, in, in, in the realm of um, it's sort of play in a sacred space and, and sacred stories. So I guess I wouldn't you know, feel, feel it necessary to, to say at this point you know, that uh, the concept of Torah Misenai is a relatively new concept. You know, that it's, not, it's not an ancient concept. So, you know, but I think later on in a different context I would talk about that. Uh, in response to Rabbi Davidson's comment, and then kind of extrapolate to the sermon as a whole, what amazes me all the time is the rabbis have no problem playing like that. In other words, when we come to the text and we embrace uh, you know, kind of, uh, our need to kind of uh, understand in a very clear way a kind of theological position on what the Bible is and, and, and how that works and all that stuff, the rabbis play in there all the time as if all their theologies out the window, and they're, they're really there standing on Sinai with all of Moses' doubts and all the rest. So this is a vote for the power of the text. The text itself, I think, is a demonstration in its essence and then it's in its particulars uh, by immersing ourselves in the story. And you're really seeing Moses in very human terms and the characters in very human terms, irrespective of what the intentionality might have been about the, about the author. That ultimately, what it what it does is it demands of us to bring out of ourselves the you know the, the nuances of that story and the it, and the application of that story, and so here's a vote for starting with the text, immersing ourselves in the text, and growing in that immersion, and out of that, then begin to realize that we then extrapolate our own story from that or shape our own story from that, as opposed to kind of imposing on the on the on the text, you know, a kind of a starting point of Tension. And I think that, you know, in response to in response to Rabbi Davidson, that's exactly what it is. And that is by starting within the text, the power is there for the taking on some level. Um, I have two unrelated comments, I think. Um, first of all, I, actually, before I have two unrelated comments, I have a comment about my two unrelated comments. Um, and that is that I think sermons operate on people in a sort of a partnership. You never know who the hearer is, and the hearer hears whatever he or she is thinking about, not even knowing you're thinking about it, which is why you can have a sermon that can be a dud for one person and be spectacular for somebody else. So you never really know. Um, sermons, I think, are multivocal, and uh, people hear them in their own 